Now these pigs, they may look like little piglets, but they're actually almost five months old. They're just a small breed. These are pot belly pigs, Vietnamese pot belly pigs, sometimes called Asian heritage hogs. And they're a smaller breed, that's why I like them. Contrary to popular belief, pot belly pigs are not a really fatty or lardy pig. In fact, no pigs are naturally extra fatty and extra lard filled. That's really just a result of of pigs overeating for the most part. I mean, if, you're, if your pigs are getting fat, they're eating too much. They're getting too many calories. They're not really inefficient either. A lot of people think that the, these pot bellies are just very wasteful and inefficient pigs. Well, let me tell you, these pot bellies have a feed conversion ratio or a feed gain ratio of about four. Sometimes I get somewhere between 3.8 and 4.3 or so on a feed conversion ratio. What that means is that they're right on par with every other heritage hog and with most of the hogs that folks raise in their own backyards or small scale. They're not the top of the line most efficient, but that's less genetics and that gets into more of uh, just a really well put together, really strict feeding regimen. Not so much uh, just fermented grains and garden scraps like these guys get. On top of that, pot belly pigs have actually the same ratio of meat on them as your standard market hogs do. Now, your standard market pig, your standard meat hog, butchers out at about 50% retained weight. That is, after you skin it, you gut it, you cut it all up, you throw out the wasted bones. After all that, you've got about 50% retained weight in meat, in packaged, wrapped meat in the freezer. These pot bellies are about the same. They're right at 50%. Now, the pot bellies, they don't get big. They don't get big at all. Um, at, if you're gonna butcher at like six months, you could expect around a 25 to 35 pound pot belly pig. I'm gonna wait till nine months. I like to butcher when it's colder out so there's no flies, nothing like that going on, getting in the meat while I'm butchering it outside here. I'm expecting these guys to be between 50 and 60 pounds at nine months old, so I'll get something like 25 pounds of pork per pig. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's quite a lot starting to add up there. So they're equally efficient with kind of your average hog. They have great meat. They do have higher quality meat according to a lot of the pork quality standards, and that's because they have better marbling. Your modern meat hogs, you know, you ever cook up a pork chop and bite into it and just see how dry it is? Overcook pork slightly and it's just really dry? That's because there's not much fat in it, not much grease in it at all. They're too lean, really. So the uh, heritage hogs, pretty much every breed of heritage hog, has marbling in the, uh, the intramuscular fat. They've got that marbling in the meat, which makes it harder to overcook. It makes it a more tender, flavorful meat. And the way we raise these pigs, you know, being outside, fresh air and sunshine, access to the greens. This pen was sad three days ago. They got to chew up all that grass. We we're giving them fresh corn and garden vegetables. They end up with a lot healthier type of fat too. I actually have someone in health nutrition research who is buying some of these pigs from me, specifically due to the fat content and the stuff that's in it. I'm not totally up to par on all the the really deep scientific side of that, but to me, that speaks in volumes. To me, the biggest deal with the pot bellies, why I like these smaller breeds, like the guinea hog, the cooney cooney, the pot belly, maybe even the uh, the Julianas or Julianas, I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Well, they're small, which means they're easier to handle. I mean, this pen is nothing but hog panels and some steel carabiners on the corners holding it together. I don't even have the side stake down right now and nothing's getting in or out. It's working quite well. When they get a bit bigger here, I might uh, stake it down. Just four T-posts, one on each corner, and wire them or tie them, tie them to the fencing here. But nothing 
rigid or tough, you don't need that because they're smaller. And because, well, because they're smaller, they don't accidentally break fences like the bigger pigs do. And that's really how they get out for the most part. The bigger hogs, they start scratching against the fence here. Or they roll over and lean against something once they get close to 300 pounds and fences tend to break. The smaller pigs just don't do that. They're also a lot better around my kids. Um, we have our breeding pigs, the boar and the sow, they're in the back here. And they're, the sow is about 100 pounds, the boar is about 140 pounds, 150. Well, if I had a full mature boar market hog and a full mature sow market hog, we're talking somewhere between 500 and 900 pounds. So I can't have that kind of thing safely around my kids with the, the tendencies that pigs can be sometimes they can get a little nippy they can start pushing sometimes you know you can't have little kids around big pigs like that it's too dangerous my pigs here my three-year-old can walk in here and, and feed them and it's fine and it's okay they're not going to hurt them the bigger pigs in the back they're still small enough that my four and five-year-old they can climb the fence and go talk to their pigs and it, i don't have to really worry about them getting hurt because it's such a small pig they're not going to accidentally get squished or crushed or something. So for me, it's also, um, well, it's, it's easier to handle and it's a little more peace of mind raising smaller pigs. It just means that instead of one large pig, I'm going to have five of these smaller ones to equal the same weight. Now the pot bellies, they grow right about on scale with your guinea hogs. Slightly smaller on average, but pretty darn close. And considering that I can get about 25 pounds of pork off of each one of these when it's time to butcher, and you only get about 120, maybe 125 pounds off of a well-raised market hog come butcher time. Let's see, 125, 100, 125, 125. Right here, I've got more pork than you get off of one full-size market hog. So I'm okay with that. I mean, that's pretty cool really. Hot belly pigs, your uh, heritage hogs, your heritage pig breeds, they're not too inefficient. They're usually easier to keep, keep up with and handle. They're healthier on average. They have less health problems than your market hogs and your, your hybrid cross pigs have. They do better outside. Their meat is more tender, more delicious. It's a darker meat, not this white dry pork that you get from the grocery stores. It's this nice dark, deep red. Looks like beef when you cut into it. Got nice marbling in it. Tastes so much better. I love the heritage hogs, particularly the smaller breeds. Your Cooney Coonies, Pot Bellies, Guinea Hogs. I love those guys. They're awesome pigs and if you're looking at getting started raising pigs, especially if you're getting started, get some small ones your first time around. Find somebody who's got some you know, some small pot bellies, they'll sell you cheap. Pot bellies are the cheapest heritage pig you can buy. Usually I can find them for between 50 and 60 bucks if I look around, maybe a hundred, but by far they're the cheapest heritage pig that I can buy as a piglet. If you want to know more about heritage hogs, the, uh, their sizes, you know, how big they get, how big they are at butcher time, when they're usually butchered, I have a great article on northernhomesteading.com, my blog. If you just Go to northernhomesteading.com, you type in the little search bar up on the right hand corner, just type in heritage hogs. That You'll find my article on heritage hog sizes, butcher weights, and all that. I gotta get going, I got more chores to finish up and it's getting late, so I'll see you later. Bye now.